Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ericsson Chan from Ping'an Technology. Ping'an Technology is the fintech arm for Ping'an Group. Uh, everybody knows Ping'an Group as the big Chinese insurance company. And in the last 10 years, Ping'an Group has evolved from a large insurance company to a fully integrated financial group. And particularly in the last two, three years, it has been leveraging fintech and turned into a technology company. In, in actual fact, our chairman, Peter Moore, has publicly spoke about it. Within the next 10 years, the whole group will be evolving into a technology company. So definitely, uh, Ping'an has been using fintech to make ourselves stronger. And I would like to share a bit more with you today. And we just heard the story from WeChat. Uh, both WeChat and Ping'an is only 45 minutes drive north of here. But the atmosphere for fintech is quite different than here. So when technology is working in China, it penetrates very far. We, you heard the story about WeChat. It's not only about shopping in a shopping mall. Even in a wet market, you're spending half a dollar, US dollar, buying raw vegetables. You have many different e-wallet options. And when something goes viral, it will go tremendous pace. Like a rental bike, it can go from zero to a million within three months' time. That is China. When a lot of the fintech buzzwords, like uh, blockchain, peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, and the one that I like a lot is robo-advisory, they tend not to go into any proof of concept or pilot stage. It goes straight to production to offer a customer service uh, to the customer right away. And this is one of them uh, that we have uh, offered about two years ago. It's to help you to do asset allocation and rebalance your portfolio through a simple app. And fintech in China goes beyond the normal buzzword. Of course, the exciting part is artificial intelligence. And fintech uh, in China, and particularly in Ping'an, is beyond the buzzword. We'll go even into area like facial recognition, voice authentication, micro-expression. The area of fintech's a lot wider. So, uh, what we have learned, uh, the Ping'an journey. There's a, a few key drivers to make this work. One, scale. Second, we call it scenario use cases. Data, speed, artificial intelligence. Scale is obvious. It's because of, if you have scale, you can afford to invest a lot more. And you have a lot more data. Hang on. It's the largest uh, insurance company on the planet Earth by market cap. Uh, a month ago, according to Forbes, uh, we are the 16th largest company uh, today, globally, and ranking 41st uh, end of last year by Forbes, uh, Fortune. Figures, 137 million financial customers we have today and growing by the minute. And more interestingly, when we talk about online customers, we normally say how many percent of your customers, financial customers, uh, they're online. 30, 40 percent, that will be doing quite well for a bank. But for us, it's 270 percent. So obviously, how we run our business model is very different. We have 376 million online users. Quickly talk about how we structure Ping'an. We focus on both finance and healthcare. It's a two key area of focus. On the finance side, insurance, banking, asset management, supported by FinTech. And then on the other side, tech fin, I call it the tech fin and tech life. Basically, it's a technology-driven business model. So to offer finance products and services and other lifestyle products that we are creating for ecosystem, finance ecosystem, housing, health, and automobile. Why are these uh, ecosystems? These are the biggest purchase in your life. And that is why we want to help every customer 
on every financial needs end to end. And we have full financial service license. That gives us plenty of scenario use cases. This is one of the apps. We is for the car driver, car owner. It's called Hao uh, Zhu. And with this app, it's everything you ever need as a car driver. It manages your tech traffic ticket, help you to find where you get the gas station, how do you fix your car, where's your repair shop. Uh, you even have a Top Gear-ish forum to talk about car news. And more interestingly, on the second from the right, as a screenshot, is your driving behavior. We will analyze every second of your driving behavior. This is uh, one day it's in Hong Kong. In fact, I was uh, in a hurry, taking my kids to play badminton, and obviously I'm driving a bit too fast. Turning the corner, slamming the brake too hard, it will tell you, and I'm getting a 66 score instead of 100. The purpose is so that we can help you, help the customer to manage, to save money, to reduce the petrol cost. But as you can imagine, if we can, using this data, we can absolutely give you the tailor-made product and price it accordingly. With different ecosystem, we can collect data about you to know you so much better, 360 degree, different dimension. Speed is paramount of what we do. We automate everything if we can. Our entire SDLC lifecycle, automated testing, development, deployment, 150 seconds is taking us to deploy a whole new technology environment. Because we put 80% of our infrastructure on cloud. So as a result, 59% of our software release from end to end complete in 14 days. 89% of our software releases complete in 30 days. It's wow, if you're fr thinking from a financial industry. But we compare ourselves with all the fintech startup here. We look at it differently. So if you talk to any fintech startup or startup matter of fact, yeah, it sounds about right. Maybe a little bit above average. So AI is the buzzword. We heard about ML earlier. We focus a lot on AI in terms of perception, prediction, and prescription. We digitize the entire using fintech, the customer journey from acquisition and product lifecycle all the way to risk control and product. And I will highlight some of the examples here. How we run our business model is very different. I mentioned about not fintech, but tech fin also. What is tech fin? We use technology first to create like marketplace for different products owner to put in the marketplace, different channel, hook up together, like Lufax. Everybody would, uh, is a more famous subsidiaries of ours, one of 28 companies within Ping An Group, Lufax, Lokam So, Lu Jing So. And beyond Lufax, we also, beyond open marketplace, we also do open platform. 30 some banks, hundreds of corporate customer, they are my customer today for Ping An technology because we offer service to small and medium-sized bank and some international bank that they don't want to spend the effort on building channels, building uh, latest modeling using big data, so we can help them. So they will focus on how to treat the customer instead. It's a win-win solution. It's low asset requirement for Ping An. It helps them lower their investment so we create a whole ecosystem using TechFin model. So about AI perception, we go beyond robo advisory. We develop our own facial recognition engine. In June, we benchmark on LFW benchmark. It's the world number one accuracy. I was very pleased about it, 99.8%. And why do we do that? Because we believe this is very core for financial business. Because we can able to tell if you are you. 
we applied it in our personal loan product. Someone can download an app, then they can apply for a loan for taking a few photos of your documents. We do a FaceTime-ish video conference through the app. Immediately, we know if you are you. We use even micro-expression engine, knowing if you are happy about what we are talking about, or if you're nervous, or should I ask you a few more questions? The end-to-end -end life cycle is taking only six minutes. Money is in your account. That is the micro-expression engine we have also built, and we, it's being used in many different use cases. Voice print authentication is what we are working on also, is some of the use cases in auto insurance, uh, credit card products, the life cycle, some of it, we will not able, we don't need to ask you if, hey, what's your birthday? What's your address? We know you are you by you t asking me a question already. So beyond perception is about prediction. We leverage our artificial intelligence to help cities like Shenzhen, Guang, uh, Chongqing, using the medical data from the government hospital, we predict in the next two weeks what kind of illness will be coming. So we can warn the public so then they can take precautionary action. Therefore, we'll minimize sickness in the public, better health, and obviously, we'll also benefit health insurance company. Prescription. So once you have all these technology, we can also apply photo recognition technology. With our car insurance business, you use the app, if your car is damaged, you take a few photos, upload it. Our engine will know if this is your car, if it's a Mercedes, it's an E-Class or C-Class, what kind of damage, do you need paint job, body work, or replace the panel? Link up to the supply chain, inventory, we know how much it will cost to fix it. One of our customers, and uh, because of the typhoon in southern China, car got damaged. Take a few photos while the typhoon is still around, upload it. Before the typhoon left southern China, money is already in his account. We have all these different AI technology built. And why do we do that in-house? We do it in-house. And then we have individual AI, when we link them together, it will create a very rich experience that is like never before. We are not digitizing a process. We are not just automating process so to increase productivity. We are not just building a faster and faster horse. We are building a car. We are not playing in the same game. In fact, we are building a race car. So the game is different already. This is all the products uh, in a simple graphic. From cloud, business control products, we put it all as an ISPAS SaaS cloud services. Why do we do that? It helps ourselves because it's fast deployment, but also because we can share. We want to share. Why do we do that? Because it's not only to bank to unbank. This is what we always talk about. Even the bank today, they do not have some of the services that some of the tier one city. If you're sitting in tier three city, you might not enjoy the same service level and products in tier one city. And if you're in the mass market segment, you might not able to afford to get the same level of service as a high net worth client. We want to share so that this technology can be used by even small and medium sized bank. Banks, in fact, we're helping bank in South Africa so that the entire demand for the industry will increase. With the demand increase, it's benefiting everyone, including Ping An ourselves. This is why we want to democratize FinTech. So, yes, FinTech could kill you. 
if you're not prepared. But I rather think of it, if you spend some effort to prepare for it, invest, partner, even get the staff understand it better, fintech will create a much stronger financial industry for everyone. Thank you very much.